Hello and welcome to the 8th Cloudscape devlog. I realize it's been quite a while since the last devlog, but I only really try to make these videos when I actually have enough stuff to make a video worthwhile. And honestly, I've just been pretty busy working on a lot of different things and wearing a lot of different hats, so the actual gameplay work has kind of taken a temporary backseat. At the end of the video, I will go into more details on the plans for the game in the future, along with plans for this channel and some other really exciting Cloudscape related news. Now I'm going to cover most of the things that I've done to the game since the previous video, just to get everyone caught up with that. So to start off, there's been a lot of updates to character creation and customization options. Now all of the options are fully integrated and you're able to choose between the original body type and a more slim variant. You can also change the body colors. I'm doing this by actually having a base color for the body sprites and then swapping the colors through a script in Unity. This allows for endless color options. However, I'm mainly going to keep the body colors limited to only a handful. They are mostly colors that represent various cloud and sky colors, such as colors you'd see in a sunset or storm clouds or a sunrise. This system of swapping colors is really useful for allowing for a wide array of clothing and accessory colors later on. I've also added a hairstyle variant and another face style variant. With all of this added, this finishes up the work needed to implement everything for the character into the game. It took a bit of trial and error just to make sure everything was saving and loading properly, but now it should be all good to go. Overall, the most time consuming part was definitely making an entirely different sized body, as I needed to go in and redraw or edit every single frame from all directions. It's a lot easier changing up the face or hair as it's mostly small changes in the frames. Fortunately it's done and I don't have to do any sort of extensive work from here. I'll still need to add poses for both bodies whenever I add new animations, and there are definitely more animations to add, but the bulk of it is completed. After the player character updates, I decided to add in a few more needed animations for the player as well. First up is a simple reuse animation that plays when you've struck something that you can't actually damage. This happens if you hit a tree stump or large rock before unlocking the ability to break them. I plan to add different sound effects and possibly even some visual effects to even better emphasize this. Another important animation that I've added is the animation that plays when you become exhausted and try to perform an action without enough energy. This was pretty crucial to add since in testing it was hard to tell right away that you were depleted of energy. This is a quick visual way to show that and I think it turned out pretty good. I want to eventually also have it be more obvious in the UI as well. Finally for animations I've also added a tool breaking animation which again was a pretty critical thing to show the player. Now when a tool breaks, it's clearly shown breaking as it's removed from your toolbar. Speaking of the toolbar, I made a few tweaks to that as well. I've slightly changed up the look of the capacity bar for items, and I've also added a small health icon which represents a tool's durability. This only shows up on equipped tools as to not clutter the toolbar. This way you can get an idea of how close a tool is to breaking at a quick glance. The look might change in the future, but for now I'm happy to just have it implemented. You can also go into your actual inventory to check the exact amount of durability left on a tool, but this icon serves as a way to quickly eyeball it instead. I've also made a simple change to the situation of being hit while holding an item. Before you just sort of still held the item even while the animation clearly showed your hands dropping and body recoiling from the impact, now the item just drops from your hands. It's a small change, but I think it makes sense. Another small change I've made is now the furnace smoke matches the campfire smoke and is round instead of square like before. There's a lot of these small changes that I don't generally cover in the devlog, but they definitely add up. Another thing I don't really go over much is just how many small fixes or bug fixes I have to do with each build. In this build I've fixed how fires save and load. Before there was a lot of issues such as campfires not properly burning out when off screen, or not properly setting the state of fire when loaded in. That's all been fixed now. Also there was a weird issue where you couldn't dig holes in your tall grass, which it turns out was simply a collision box being placed too low on the grass, causing it to block the space below it from being interacted with. There are tons of these little issues that you don't really consider while planning a game, but they crop up a lot. At least for me, maybe there are people who have super clean builds with no bugs, but that's definitely not the case for me. Honestly, with a game like this where so many things can interact, small bugs like this can add up really fast. The best thing to do is just tackle them as you come across them and try to plan ahead for them, but that can be really difficult to do. One last example of this sort of thing is that previously you could place structures on top of dug holes. That doesn't seem like too big of a deal, but it didn't really look right visually, and doing this meant you couldn't cover the hole back up properly, so you just ended up with an object placed on top of an open hole. I've since fixed this problem and also made it so structures can now properly be placed on top of nature tiles and path tiles. 
Another object interaction thing I had to take care of was giving priority to objects that are on top of other objects when interacted with. For example, if you were to say, hammer the dock, it should actually cause damage to the dock. But if you were to hammer a crate that is sitting on the dock, it should theoretically hit the crate first. This wasn't actually the case, and it meant sometimes the game was just randomly picking which object to damage first. I've since fixed this so it always prioritizes the topmost object. This means you can smash a crate on a dock without damaging the dock underneath. So that's all I really have to show in terms of game updates. Other than that, I've actually been spending a good portion of my time lately working on the Kickstarter trailer and page. Which leads me to my next topic, my plans for this channel in the near future. So because I'm having to switch gears and work almost exclusively on the Kickstarter, there really won't be much in terms of development progress on the game itself for a while. This naturally means there won't be any new devlogs for me to post for a while. But I would still like to add more content to the channel, so the plan is to release a few tutorial videos while I'm working on the Kickstarter side of things. These videos will basically just give me a break from working on that stuff and also give you all something new to watch. I hope they will be informative and help some people out. I think my first two videos will cover sort of my workflow and how I keep track of my progress, and also I'd really like to do a pixel art video showcasing some tips and tricks for beginners and intermediate artists. I've already written up quite a bit of script for those videos, so keep an eye out for at least one of those to pop up here in the near future. Speaking of the Kickstarter, someone reached out to me recently and they've made an absolutely amazing track for the Kickstarter trailer video. I'm super excited to put my game's visuals alongside this music, and I really think you guys are going to like how it makes the game feel. I'm so impressed with this composer that I've asked them to help create more tracks for the game itself. I almost can't wait to share this music with everyone, but right now we are dealing with a contract, so I don't want to go announcing the person just yet until everything gets finalized. With all of that said, I'm still active on the Discord channel, and you're free to swing by and say hello. I'm still taking suggestions for the game, and I'm happy to answer questions about the game, or just game dev in general, so don't be shy and come stop by the Discord. Finally, I would just like to thank you all for your continued support, and I hope that you can take a moment to check out the Kickstarter page and follow the Kickstarter to get alerted when that launches. Links to the Discord and Kickstarter are in the description below. Oh yeah, and I would super appreciate it if you could like this video if you haven't yet. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I release future videos. As always, thanks for watching.